Okay, so what is the vision here at the Indy Ale House? So I wanted to uh, I wanted to have a, be brewery first and uh, make the kinds of beers you can't find easily in Toronto. That upset me greatly that you can't find you can find very easily in Buffalo, but you can't find in Toronto. Wanted to make uh, bigger, more flavorful ales. Doesn't necessarily mean high alcohol, although of the seven beers we've made so far, six are pretty high alcohol. Um, uh, a pretty basic kitchen. We have a great pizza oven and a smoker. We're gonna do sandwiches and pizza. And everything food-wise will have the same attention to detail as the beer, local and organic ingredients where possible. Uh, not pretentious, not super fancy. Um, just, you know, kind of fast, fresh, and, and, and pairs well with beer. We're gonna make uh, a couple really strong IPAs, uh, a pretty basic approachable IPA, a breakfast porter like this one with lots of oats so it's pretty drinkable despite being 7.2 or so and then a few Belgian beers will rotate a sour uh, a wit beer uh, and probably a farmhouse or a, a saison uh, we also have a retail store one of the very few good things about uh, liquor laws in Ontario is that breweries can have a retail store on site we're in a great neighborhood in the junction high traffic not a lot of beer stores or liquor stores in the area uh, so we think we'll do pretty well Despite not selling a mainstream beer, we'll do pretty well with the retail store. And so. what do you think you're going to be selling out of there? So uh, size-wise, container-wise. Oh, I see. We're going to sell a two-liter growler at the start okay. and a 22-ounce bomber, like a like a pint and a half. Yeah. Big bottles. Um, mostly because they're the cheapest bottles for me to buy at the moment. I think growlers is kind of the tradition for a brewery. Um, have to educate uh, the crowds a little bit that you need to take this home and drink it now and not store it and take it to your friends next week um, as we kind of get going a little more we're gonna barrel age some beers in the basement uh, with a huge space nice cold uh, for bourbon barrels and aging some of our bigger beers we'll get some specialty and one-off bottles but we're not gonna do six packs and two fours we're definitely not going to the LCBO or the beer brews retail uh, apart from not really liking who they are and what they do, it doesn't make any economic sense for us anyways. We're just too small and I might as well just sell out of here first and uh, out of the retail store second. We'll have about 10 accounts in the city. That's it. Uh, I want to find places that like craft beer to the same extent we do, know how to manage it, uh, and have the same kind of customer vibe that, that we're going for. So it's not sitting there. Um, we're going to in a few of the beer geek bars, a couple of little neighborhood bars no one knows about that are awesome, uh, and a couple of restaurants because I have friends in all those industries and I'll, I'll sell there first. For any of you that don't know, the reason you don't find many of these smaller breweries beers outside of the brewery itself is, well, first off, the brewer's retail and it's a huge number to get their beer in there. And then... Yeah. There's some logistical issues. You got to pay a giant listing fee. You got to produce a certain amount. And you're kind of at their mercy for what you make. And I understand where that model comes from and why it exists. It doesn't fit for me. Also, you find it's a little outdated. It's everything about liquor laws in Ontario is outdated at least 50 years. That's from like the 1400s, um, where city states controlled everything, and that's what the brewers retail is. It's owned by the two big brewers. It's a tiny bit owned by another big brewer and everybody thinks it's government run, it's not, it's worse. It's monopoly run. LCBO is not much better when it comes to brewers. If you're big, if you can produce, if you agree to their terms, great. I don't like any of that. So I'd rather to be able to sell my beer in craft beer stores throughout the province. And I think that day will come, but I got my hands full right now with getting a floor in here and getting the electrical working and the taps up. Like I, I'll worry about changing the world later. Now, for getting your license for the brewery, what steps do you have to go through with the LCBO? That's not explainable in less than 100 hours of nightmare. Um, it's, I'll say they're super helpful once they believe that you're serious and not just a guy calling and saying, hey, I want to open a brewery. And that's great. And that you know, saves your life. Um, but it's like six or seven parallel streams, all of which are interdependent. So you can get this far and then you have to switch and start over at this one to go a little further and switch and go back and do this. And that's actually causing me a big problem at the moment because as soon as you start your application, it triggers stuff with the city 
So I have city inspectors coming here before we built it, anything. When this was an empty square, empty, not a thing in it, not a floor, the health inspector came and said, you need more sinks. Not, hey, you're not finished building, but you need more sinks. You could have inspected this place with your eyes closed. It's an empty square. Imagine an empty square and there are no sinks. But because I had triggered and someone's computer said, hey, you have 90 days to go inspect, someone showed up and said, uh, you need more sinks. So the process is not friendly. Uh, the people are, which thank God. Um, it's just that there aren't enough of these in Ontario that someone could have sat down and rewritten a better process, right? For the six guys who suffered before me and paved the way, when I asked them questions, they just kind of laugh and twitch and say, you're gonna have some fun. And you know, it's unexplainable. Uh, it would have been significantly easier to go be a contractor there. Now, why the idea of brewery first instead of the Tide House full on idea? Um, my passion is making good beer, not uh, let's make pizza and someday make beer. Uh, I want the food to be equally good, but I'll find the person who has that passion and kind of fits in. And I have, I have partners who are going to make the food amazing. I wanted to make beer. So it's what's missing in Ontario. It's what I want to do. So I had to focus on what I wanted to do first. Now, before anyone asks on the video itself, are you going to have any of the other brands of beer in here? Yeah, we're going to, at the, the plan right now is to have 12 taps coming out of here okay. and two cask engines. Um, we only have five, or, we could probably only have six or seven beers of ours at once. Okay. So that leaves four or five at least uh, guest taps. Um, my only, uh, I think, out and out rules are there will be no loggers here. It's not the Indy Lager House, the Indy Ale House. We may be the only bar in Toronto that I know of that doesn't sell a lager. If you want a lager, go to one of the other bars in the city, the other thousands. If you want an ale, come here. Um, we'll do some education on why an ale can taste just like a lager. Um, we'll probably have a few uh, beers from breweries who have been super helpful in getting started and they can have a tap as long as they want to sell us beer. And we'll rotate the rest on whatever's kind of complements our lineup. Now. Toronto, the Toronto beer scene, probably the best beer scene on, in Ontario at the moment. Um, how do you feel? Well, yeah. How do you feel you're going to fit into that beer scene? How do you feel you can help that beer scene? Yeah, I, I, I don't. I, I think about this. I don't want to be arrogant and say I'm going to help make massive changes to the beer scene. I think you know if you look back five years ago to today, there's been a massive increase. Uh, and when I was writing my business plan for this, I went back 10 years or about 11 years and said, how many bars in Toronto have two craft beers on tap? And it was like eight. And today it's like 250. So there's, it's significantly getting better. That's despite any law changes. That's with still this oppressive regime of not quite understanding why the rest of the world is able to trust their citizens to drink beer. In Ontario, we just can't get there yet. Um, so the Toronto beer scene is going to change whether I do anything or not for the better. I want to help kick it in the ass a little bit and get it a little better. My contribution, I think, will be making beers you can't quite find right now. Although there are a lot of breweries who are making crazy good beers. They're just making them as one-off or seasonals or once a year we'll make this beer. I'm going to make those beers every day. You make this beer every day? I make this beer every day. Sorry. I'm in love with that beer. Yeah. Um, this is a beer that uh, I made as a home brewer, <laughs> and Kevin Somerville at Niagara College has been kind of been our, our brewmaster, the, the more practical brewer than me, because I would make some crazy stuff. So he's, he's the buffer in between. And uh, when I showed him the recipe for this, he's like, oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Let's tweak this. Let's do that. I said, no, no, let's just stick to this one. And it, he made a couple changes, but it's it's come out. People who don't like porters, who don't like dark beers, pound this beer. And that's a little scary. It's about 7.2 at the moment. Um, but with the amount of oats in it, it's really smooth. And it doesn't have a lot of roasted grains, which most porters do. So it's missing that bitterness. In all honesty, before I go to the next question, I'd come here just for this. Yeah, that's the plan. Now... Wait till we bourbon barrel age this. Oh, don't tell me that. 
we, we've gone for a tour through your establishment, and it, it looks great. I mean, you can tell it's not done. Right. But uh, it looks like it's going to be amazing. Uh, what is your expected timetable to open the doors? I've, I've stopped answering this question about six months ago because I'm just wrong every time. The We're very close now. If To physically build it out so that it was ready to go would be less than two weeks. Um, if the city gives me the permit telling me everything I need to do to comply, we'll do that in two weeks. We'll brew. Four weeks later, we'll have some beer. So in theory, six weeks from the day, I get this piece of paper. Uh, I've waited nine weeks now. Next week will be the 10th week. And after that will be the 11th week. I don't have a lot of faith I'll get it, although I've had some city councillors swear to me I would get it soon. And that was last week. It, it won't help if the inside workers go on strike. That won't help at all. Alrighty, now, um, craft beer versus macro. What do you think craft beer is? Um, craft beers, you know, typically smaller scale, usually by a factor of a thousand or more, uh, made by hand without as much care, without as much uh, consideration for the cost, more for, I wanna produce a beer that has the following flavor profiles uh, and I'll pay whatever to get that done. And macro beer, like most mass produced things, is about unit cost, how much you can sell on the one side, how much can you maximize profit, on the other side, how much can you minimize cost. So if it's cheaper to use rice than grain, use rice. If it's cheaper to put it in this bottle versus that bottle, do that. If I sell more when I put girls in bikinis in my commercials, do that. So they don't really care. The beer is far down the list of what do I need to do to make a profit. Now, is there a difference in shelf life between beer that you'd make and the big guys? There doesn't necessarily need to be. Um, if you put in a lot of preservatives and histamines and so on, like some of the big brewers do, then yeah, your beer will last as long as a Twinkie, um, as long as you'll put it under a heat lamp. Um, and this beer, I don't want to find out how long it'll last because I want to sell it before we would come close to finding out. It's got a lot of alcohol in it. Some of them have a lot of hops in them, so it could last quite a while, but we're not going to find out. Just as an aside, my record right now is two and a half years. I have a case of something. I'm not going to say what. Well, there are some years? beers. There's some beers that are meant to age, like wine, right? I have some Thomas Hardy's from 1996 and 95 sitting in a cold spot, but they're, you know, they're like syrup. They're meant to be aged. Um, I don't know if I have the patience to make a beer that's meant to be aged because I'll be sitting here when I'm with my friends and I'll have had a beer or two and say, hey, "Let's go taste that beer," and then it'll be gone. So I'm probably not going to start that path. Some people know that there's rice and beer, corn and beer. Some yeah. people don't. Uh, other than those, food coloring, what else might there be put in a big brand over what you wouldn't be putting in yours? I found out years ago, and I don't know for a fact if this is still true, but I believe it is, that one of the big Canadian big brewers puts histamines in their beer. And I have a decent amount of allergies in the summer, and I take antihistamines. So taking one of those beers is counteracting my medication and making me cry not for good reason and wheeze and cough like I had full-on hay fever so that's not cool um, there's all kinds of polypropylene chemical things and stabilizers and, and some of them are natural and some of them aren't um, and I don't think anything's super harmful otherwise most Canadians would be dead by now um, but it can't be good if it doesn't make it taste better why are you putting it in and I don't, you know, I have nothing against a big brewer. If this was made by a big brewer and you were drinking it, you'd be like, yeah, let's go get this at the beer store. The problem is, it isn't. That comment just made me sad because there is a beer somewhat like this by a big brewer that isn't at the beer store. Yeah, well, that's why I make it here. The back border. Only in Quebec, two stores. Yeah. And, you know, the big brewers all employ super talented people with state-of-the-art equipment. They could make amazing beers if they wanted to, but they run by an economic model that says you can only spend this much to make a batch, you can 
can spend this much to market it and you need to get this much of a return. And I don't really care about that stuff to the same extent they do. We're a business, we need to be you know, profitable. But our first consideration is let's make a really good beer that tastes like this and then have the faith and confidence and have done the research that there's enough of a market to buy it. We're just talking about uh, contract brewing there. So actually, maybe we can hit up that right now. I got nothing against contract brewing. I'm slightly jealous of contract brewers because they didn't have to put up with the nightmare that I've put up with here. It's an easier start, right? It's, yeah. it's a few thousand dollars in the love of paperwork that I had to do anyways. Um, and there are nights where I wish I had got that brew because it would have been much easier. Uh, and by and large, it's not a model. Like my background's in some statistical modeling and some marketing modeling. It's not a model I could make work for me or what I wanted to do. There are a few exceptions in the city, but most contract beer is not stuff I, I love. You know, Dennis and Michael Hancock makes one of the best beers on the planet, and he's a contract brewer, but he also used to be a, a, a brewer and have a brewery. So he's a bit of an exception to the rule, and there are other guys who are exceptions to the rule too. Um, it's one of those things that in theory should work differently than it does in practice. In theory, if some guy came in here and used my brewing equipment and made a beer, it should be just as good as mine or better or whatever he decided to make. But the reality of the business model is, if you're gonna contract, you're probably making a big batch at a brewery that has you know, 100 barrel uh, tanks. So you're stuck with 500 or 200 kegs that you need to sell quickly. You're a middleman, so you make less. You're gonna pay the brewer to make them. You gotta sell them at about the same price. So you're making just a piece in between. And so in order for you to make any amount of money, you have to sell a lot. And if you have to sell a lot of something, you kind of get into mass producing it and you kind of get into the big brewer world. I need to keep it a little cheaper. I need to spend marketing dollars to get it sold. And I need to make something that's approachable to the masses. None of which is my model. I mean, I'd love it if it was cheaper, but it is what it is. And just like we were talking with a few brewers about with the contract thing as well, you're also looking at getting in the way of the main brewery and the main brewery getting in the way of the contract uh, yeah. you are running out of beer on theory you know they should be competitors in the in the craft brewer world i don't know that i mean no one seemed like a competitor to me yet so if i was making my beer somewhere else i think i could get around that part uh although you know there may come a time when i'm kicking them off a tap but they might not be so happy but I, I was more talking about just taking up the time in the brewery. Yeah, I mean, it, it's probably you're a little bit of a pest to them, no matter how nice they are. Who's this guy coming in? Oh, he's paying me. Up. So uh, there's probably some of that, but you know, craft brewers have been pretty awesome in my experience. I think you can probably get around that too. The the you know they're you're they're getting paid for you to be there, so they don't really care what you do as long as you pay your bill. Um, and it's not a bad way to start. Some of the problem is it, it isn't a way to transition historically. Very few people start as, craft, as a contract and then migrate into full brewery because you don't make enough money. If that's your plan to make money contract brewing and then open a place and you're dreaming, that's never gonna happen. Um, you need to have money from other sources or do it for eons. Um, but if you're just a passionate guy who can't, or a woman, uh, who can't put together a uh, your own place and you want to go make a funky beer and you can build a market for it it's a great it's a great way to do it one of the problems now is most brewers in Ontario don't have any capacity they're full full out making their beer which they should be and they should use that opportunity to make a more adventurous beer rather than let somebody else make another amber okay to touch on something you just just said female brewers how do you feel they're entering the marketplace? How do you do you feel that they'll be accepted fully soon? I, I th yeah, there's no there's no reason. I mean, I'd hire a female brewer if I could find one who wanted to make the beer that I wanted to make. I, there's it's no, I don't think there's any bias against it. Um, it. Historically, lots of brewers were female. You go back hundreds of years and that yeah, kind of thing. Back so when it was just monks and women. Yeah, so I, I know there's no there's no genetic reason you couldn't be a brewer. Um, I don't think it, it's, again, is the beer good or not? You can't taste who made this, whether it was a guy or a girl who made it. It doesn't come out in the beer. So if there are women who want to get into craft brewing, by all means, get into craft brewing. It's not, there's no reason you couldn't. Like, on the other hand, it shouldn't be a gimmick. 
there are, you know, six, six women made this beer. I, I don't care. Does it taste good or not? Like, I, I kind of don't care. Um, there are more getting into it in Toronto. I think that's awesome. Uh, there are a couple amazing brewers who are women in Toronto. And that's amazing. But I, I don't think you care. You care if the beer is good or not. Yeah. No, I, I don't care who brewed it. As I said, there's even some big brand beers that I, I actually enjoy slightly. Yeah, I mean, there's so, a time and a place for everything. I think that for me, it's the about, do you have the choice of getting this beer? And right now you don't have a choice of getting a beer like this at the big beer venues. If you go to any of the markets they own in the city, whether it's a stadium or a, you know, a theater, you can't choose this. You wanna to go to the retail distribution, you can't choose this. So that's the part that sucks. If they made amazing beers, I probably wouldn't have gotten into the brewing industry the way I did. If I lived in San Diego, I would have worked at a brewery and I'd have been happy to just pour it. But I live in Ontario, I live in Toronto where you can't get this beer. So doing something about it is making this beer. Now, do you think the Ontario beer market will ever hit the US status or Quebec, BC? Uh, I hope so, but no. Ontario needs to undergo a fundamental change to be like any of those places in any way. Ontario's a funky place. It's different. Um, I, I know I've essentially lived here most of my life. I, I choose to live here. I like it here. It, my argument when I when I when I have this conversation with people who want to be educated on it is, in no way, shape, or form do I think Buffalo is a world class cosmopolitan city, other than maybe chicken wings and beer selection compared to Toronto. LCBO says, hey, we got six new craft beers this week. Hey, awesome. I can go get a thousand at a shitty little corner store in Buffalo. Unless you're me. So, you know, like how are we going to catch up with that? There needs to be a fundamental law change. There needs to be this kind of belief that your citizens aren't criminals. Um, because it, all hell would break loose if you could get beer at Loblaws. Um, riots in the streets, it'd be like the Leafs had just won their 100th cup in a row. It'd be, <laughs> it'd be insanity if you could just go get a beer. Because the clerk's not trained to tell you how old are you, right? Like, this, the arguments are asinine. Um, could we get there? There's nothing preventing us getting there from just a little bit of progressive thinking. Will we get there? I, I haven't seen it, so I doubt it. Okay, last, how many, how many craft breweries could we support here in Ontario? I think hundreds. I, you know, if you go to Belgium, there are hundreds and some that serve only one city block. If you want to find that beer, you go to that block. Um, you know, we support two gigantic big brewers. If you replace them with a hundred small brewers, we'd have just as much beer. So, um, you know, there are, there are probably 10 neighborhoods in, in the city of Toronto that could each support two or three breweries like this, or we could support two or three big regional breweries, if as long as they made good beer, in my opinion. Um, we could support, we're the most, we have the fewest amount of breweries per capita of any major North American city that has at least one brewery. We're the fewest, the lowest ratio, for sure. Um, it's ridiculous. We could easily have more brewers. Um, it's getting a lot better than it was a few years ago. I think if nobody does anything crazy, it will still get better for the next five years. Uh, as long as we don't have SARS or alien invasion, it should be really good for the next 10 years. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jason. Yeah, no problem. We're here at the Indy Ale House. It's uh, Dundas and Keel. Hopefully, we can sit in here in the next month and a half to two months hopefully, and enjoy some really good beer. So everybody remember Dundas and Keel in the Ale House. Check it out as soon as it opens. We'll let you know when that is. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no